Hey, Ohio. Welcome once again to the Retirement Blueprint Show with Tim Lofton of Axum Planning and Wealth. I'm Spike Spangle. Mr. Tim Lofton, what's on your mind this week? Well, I think we're going to talk a little bit about the state of retirement in America. That's right. That's that right. Is, that is what we are talking about all month long. All throughout this month, we're going to be talking about the state of retirement planning here in the United States. And more importantly, what you can do about it if you feel like you are behind today. I, I got to say, though, Tim, my, my hair is still blown back from our new intro. I love it. I know. I, it's I, so that, good. That new show intro. It's that retirement can be exciting, invigorating, in yeah. fact, but you we know, need to plan for it. Well, listen, retirement, it, it feels like this daunting pressure that like sits on us. Like, you know, I feel like I'm behind and I should have done this and I wish I had done that. And, it, and it, it gets us to a state of not doing anything. That's really why this show is, is on the air, is to let people know, listen, right. there's hope, there's solutions, there's a way to go about things that can alleviate those fears. All right, and thank you so much for being positive. So I'm gonna take it in the exact opposite direction. <laughs> Social Security. Perfect. We are, this is like the Titanic heading towards the iceberg right, right now, right? <laughs> With this, the, the state of Social Security, we keep hearing about how it, it won't be totally funded. There could be a reduction. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know that we've talked about it a lot on television, on radio, or on mm -hmm. WHIO on, on the weekends as well. Um, is, is there any update? Is there anything that you can be positive about? Right yeah, now? so here's, here's the thing. When we're looking at Social Security, uh, and, and the article that we're kind of referencing here came from the Congressional Budget Office, and they used the word in peril. Like, it's in, like I don't know what that and, means. And people like the Congressional Budget Office don't usually w use phrases like in peril. In peril, <laughs> right? I mean, it, so it, it's almost like they're, they've been setting us up for all these years for this thing to fail. And, you know, is, is it possible? Are we in trouble? I, I suppose. But here's, here's what I know about Washington, D.C. They run on greed and power. That's it. How do I get reelected? Well, let me ask you a question, Spike. How do I get reelected telling people that it is the largest voting base, we're going to reduce your Social Security benefit? How do I get elected on that? I can't. So will they figure it out? I, I, I think they will. I, I think they have to. Another phrase that we've talked about, the peak 65, more Americans turning 65, yeah. about four and a half million per year from now until 2030 will be turning 65. You don't want to tell them, hey, by the way, you know all that reduction we took from your paycheck from all the way back when you were 18 years old? Yeah, you're only going to get 80% of it now. That, that's 16 and a half million people that vote. Like all of those 16 and a half million people go to the polls and speak their mind. And so I think if you look at the age of population, it's going to force the government to actually get its head out of wherever it is that we can't mm -hmm. talk about on TV and get this thing fixed. Thank you for reminding that, you know, I, I have to talk to the FCC when, <laughs> when you see things that are on the borderline. We and don't, thank you we for don't, doing we that. We don't want beeping happening yeah. on, on the show. Yeah. Like beeping is, beeping is probably bad. And also thank you for doing the mental math for me. I'm like, what is the 16 mil? What is he to? Oh, I get it. Okay, that's the 4 million a year from now until 2030. And don't forget about who's already taking Social Security. Right. I, and there was another number from it, again, lots of statistics. Uh, Tim does a lot of research on this stuff, and he does this for you, not only the viewers, but also for clients, helping folks out, paying attention to this stuff, like the Congressional Budget Office. Do you enjoy reading that on I mean, Sunday that, mornings? I mean, that's good stuff. <laughs> that's I mean, good. there is nothing more exciting uh, than... Page Turner, yeah, right? Yeah, it's really good. Yeah. I'm not saying it's John Grisham, but I'm not saying it's not. <laughs> But, but I, I love that you stay informed like that. Yeah. Another thing that, that came from it, though, is that over 90% of Americans actually take their Social Security by their full retirement age. Mm -hmm. So we know that you can have up to 8% growth per year from your full retirement right. age to 70. Less than 10% of Americans actually do that. Mm -hmm. Do you see that in the office as well? I mean, it, it's interesting as we look at, at these studies that are coming out because there is more and more people that are claiming their Social Security early. And, and this can be a mistake. They're, it's almost like they're being scared into making that choice versus having a plan that says, yeah, this is the good thing to do. Because you're exactly right, Spike. If I delay from 67 to age 70, I get an 8% return every year on the growth of the benefit that I'm going to receive. That's great if I can afford to do that. If I mm -hmm. still have another source of income that I am not reliant on that Social Security. The problem is that if 
I claim my social security early and I'm still working, I'm not getting to keep my social security. And I've, I've had this come up in the office so many times where people are like, I'm gonna turn social security on early and then I'm gonna take that money and I'm just gonna save it because I'm still working. And they're missing out on what they're actually going to net. They're missing out on the future benefit that they're giving up to do something that, that on paper sounds like a good idea. I wish we could have like a big red X come up on the screen right now and right. say, folks, you've got to be aware of this. You're not saying that you don't need to take it if you need it. Perhaps uh, you had to leave the workforce early. You're trying to find a stopgap while you're trying to maybe look for something else to do while you're in your 60s. Mm -hmm. But the concept of taking it early, 62, 63, and just banking it away or even investing it, if you're still working, if you're earning a decent income, mm -hmm. you're not gonna get to keep all that. And no. we're having to say this over and over again. I mean, you're, you're gonna lose two thirds of it, potentially, to taxes. And then on top of that, I've, I've increased my taxability on the money that I am earning, and I've given up the future growth of the benefit because I turned it on early. I mean, it's, it's literally kind of a trifecta of bad things that it's coming out of a kind of a, uh, on the surface, a good idea. Yeah. I mean, it seems like, oh, well, you know, I can save and I have, you know, an extra $1,500 a month to save. And if I do that for another five or six years, that's going to make a difference, except you're not going to have that $1,500. Right. So one of the, the big takeaways we'd like to say to folks, if you haven't turned on Social Security, and especially if you're thinking about taking it early while you're still working, please speak with someone, whether it's Tim, whether it's someone like us, just make sure that they do retirement planning, they do tax considerations. This isn't something you just want to ask your 401k provider. This isn't something you actually necessarily want to call the Social Security office for. I know that sounds weird. Well, they can't give you advice. They can't give you financial they, planning They can advice. just tell you, if you take it here at this age, this is what you will get. They can't advise you whether or not that's a good idea. And this is a lifetime decision. I mean, you make this decision one time, and then that's it, and you live with it for the rest of your life. Make sure it's the right one for right. you. Uh, we're going to talk more about solutions for Social Security, not just for yourself, but hopefully what uh, our lawmakers might come together with. So it's not all about, you know, things are, are, are falling apart, but we do want you to be aware of it. And if you need to create an increase in your income stream, it's better to act sooner than later. Let's not wait until there could be a reduction in Social Security. Tim, tell them about the retirement blueprint. This isn't something you just print out or a book that we can send somebody, but it is a deliverable when they come into the office, right? Yeah, the retirement blueprint is, is a system that I designed about 20 years ago to look at all the areas of retirement that people need to focus on. An income plan, a tax plan, Social Security claiming strategy, an estate plan, and making sure that if something happens and you spend time in a nursing home or lose a spouse, how are you going to pay for that? All wrapped up into a customized plan designed specifically for you. Folks, call and get your own retirement blueprint from Tim Lofton of Axum Planning and Wealth. You can call the phone number you see down there in the bottom of the screen. We have people from the team standing by right now to schedule that appointment for you. Or you can use the QR code down there on the bottom of the screen. Open up your phone to the camera function point it at the black and white box and just click on it. It'll take you right over there. You can claim your own no cost, no obligation spot to get your own retirement blueprint from Tim Lofton of Axum Planning and Wealth. Don't go anywhere. A message from the team following this and then we'll be back with more Tim Lofton and solutions to Social Security. Social Security is easy, right? The question is, should I take it now or later? Well, there are dozens of ways that you can take Social Security if you're single and hundreds if you're married. You've paid into the system for decades. Don't you want to make sure that you optimize your retirement income? Depending on how you've set up your other retirement accounts, your Social Security could either be tax-free or up to 85% taxable. It's not as simple as it might seem. So give us a call today. Let us uncomplicate Social Security for your retirement. Give us a call at 855-684-3485 or you can scan the QR code below to schedule your complimentary review. 
Welcome back to the Retirement Blueprint with Tim Lofton of Axum Planning and Wealth. And just as the commercial was talking about there, Social Security and solutions, how to maximize it. Mm -hmm. Well, let, let's talk about the legislators' role in this. What can they do to help us out? What are the, some of the things you've heard on the street? Well, there, there's a lot of talk, uh, nothing definitive yet, but they are looking at different ways that they can basically tax us to help try and, and, and turn this thing around. And, you know, we've, we've seen a lot in the news lately about how they're looking at taxing people that are making over $400,000 and that that could potentially be a fix for Social Security. Okay. I wouldn't mind, uh, I guess, seeing, I guess, the fine print on that. Uh, it'll still take a while, though, I think, for something like that to make sure that the, the trust fund has enough money in it. Um, what about our own solutions? Should we be taking more risk right now? Can we look at tools like annuities? We, we know that part of the legislation of Secure 2.0 was to kick open the door to possibly have those in there. Mm -hmm. I mean, should we be looking for permanent retirement income solutions before we just rely so much on Social Security? Well, I, I think the overall idea here is we have to build a income plan. We have to understand where and what we're going to need. The first, the first piece of this is really looking at how much income are you going to need net in retirement? And then we can start subtracting what we already know is gonna come in, whether it be pension, whether it be social security, and then we can figure out if Social Security did drop 25%, how would we fix that? In the same manner that we decide if something happened to my spouse and my Social Security went away for him or her, how would we replace that? It's all about understanding the solutions that are going to support the worry, the concern. All right. So are you part of the Social Security Administration? What You talk a lot about the Social Security. Do you mind helping folks out with, with mapping this? Where does that fit into the retirement blueprint? Or is this just a conversation you're having about what Congress isn't doing? <laughs> well, if we indeed invoke the uh, taxing over 400000 and we mm -hmm. start raising these limits, we're going to take over the number 11 spot in the world for the highest tax bracket. So we'd have that going for us. Uh, dripping with sarcasm, in case you you didn't understand, um, I don't know. I don't know that the Social Security piece is the thing that we have, should be focused on. I think what we should be focused on is the person's plan, what their retirement is supposed to look like, how they want to live their life. That's going to tell us how much they need. We'll figure out where the income is going to come from. And there's a lot of tools out there. We are seeing a, you know, $385 billion went into annuities last year. There's a reason why. People are looking for guaranteed income. Not saying annuities good, bad, not saying they're the right fit or not the right fit. I'm just simply saying people are talking with their money. They are looking down the road and saying, I'm going to need this income. I want it to be guaranteed, and there's a limited number of solutions that'll do that. Right, and you can also sometimes guarantee that income with increases mm -hmm. over time, right? Whether that's participating in the market or a, a guaranteed fixed rate. Of and cover the spouse, which is, you know, the, the difference, uh, you know, in annuities today. I mean, basically, when you look at a pension, a pension is nothing more than an annuity. And a lot of times, pensions today have a... a thing that you can elect to have your income continue for the spouse, but it's usually like 25%, 50%. It doesn't actually replace mm -hmm. the income, which just adds to another hole that we have in our retirement plan. With an annuity, the, the advantage there is that that income is joint. It's exactly the same for both party, depending on, it doesn't matter if somebody passes away or not. And if I don't use all the money, I can pass it on, unlike a pension that just has a hard stop when I die. I, there's a big difference between taxes and higher costs, mm -hmm. right? Costs seem to be coming from the, the corporations. They, they've been increasing costs. The inflation of things haven't necessarily been coming right. down. But, but it's weird because it creates that we're not crazy about the, the high interest rates when it comes to getting a mortgage, mm -hmm. but it has produced opportunities to get rid of older tools. And I mean older, I mean something from two, three, four, five years ago mm -hmm. and be able to actually lock in a better interest rate. Isn't there better, safer money right now? Yeah, I mean, you're, you're able to basically refinance your retirement right now. And, and this is a, an interesting time because for the last 15 years, we've had very, very low interest rates. Now, all of a sudden, interest rates have gone up and, you know, we're like, oh, my gosh, like I can't buy a house, can't buy a car. It's too expensive. 
but we're missing out on the opportunity to refinance our retirement, to be able to lock in higher rates. We don't know. I mean, the, the Fed's talked about reducing rates. They haven't yet, but that is a, a common theme out there. Let's not miss that window to maybe lock in those higher rates the same way we would lock in lower rates for our mortgages. Right. And we know that you've got that in things like CDs. We're seeing it in money markets. Mm -hmm. um, you had even said earlier in the year that uh, these things might be going away. So that window has been being held open, but mm -hmm. we still know it's not going to be open forever. You've right. got to act. You've got to do something as soon as you can. I mean, think about it from the government standpoint. When rates are high, they're paying that rate on the debt that they have. So it's in the government's best interest to reduce rates. It's not just okay. about us. We, we forget about these trillions of dollars that we have in this federal deficit. How is that financed? Well, you know, we have things like treasury bonds and things that the government uses to finance the government. Those rates have crept up because interest rates have crept up. You can take advantage of that same type of idea by locking in those rates before they go down. Right. And the way that your firm is actually registered and licensed, if somebody comes in and they've, they've got a tool and an income plan that's working for them, right? you've got to tell them that it's, it's, it's like a doctor. You have a responsibility to say, look, you're doing pretty good. Mm -hmm. Okay? You don't need to change anything. Because you don't want to do work. You don't want to change who no. somebody is working with if the, you can't provide value to them. Correct? No, Spike, there, there's too many people out there that need our help. And, uh, you know, about 10% of everybody that comes in our office, we send on their way with a second opinion of, you know what, you're right on target. You're doing exactly what you should be doing, and there's really not anything that needs to be adjusted. But, Spike, that leaves 90% where some way in their plan, there's things that need to be adjusted. And if that's you, wouldn't you want to know? Yeah. You know, if, if you're part of that 10%, your worst case scenario is you came into our office, got a free cup of coffee, and we got to talk. But if you're part of that 90%, you're talking about impacting your retirement, your spouse's retirement, what you leave to the kids and grandkids. Now is the time to make sure that if you think you're on track, that you actually are. It, you know, this happens uh, at least once or twice a week. Somebody will call, call in and say, I'd like my retirement blueprint. And, and that's mm -hmm. great. That's exactly what we want you to do. But this isn't something you, you put in a manila envelope and you just you send yeah. out in the mail. The, the, the blueprint is a process. It's not, it's not a piece of paper. It's not, yeah. it's not a booklet. It's something where we actually have to kind of sit down with you and put those inputs in, sure. right? And that's, you know, we're, we're in, a, in a world today where that's how we digest information. Just, you know, send me the Retirement for Dummies book and I'll read it and I'll do what I'm supposed to do and it'll be fine. And unfortunately, there's just, there's too many moving targets with retirement to be able to send out anything that would help somebody because we don't know what you need. We don't know if you're on a second marriage. We don't know if you have kids or no kids. We don't know if you have a pension or no pension. We don't understand the family dynamic and what you're trying to accomplish. All of that requires a customized plan, a written plan that is yours, that belongs to you and your family. That's what we want to build. And that's exactly what a retirement income specialist like Tim Lofton can provide for you, one of our television viewers. All you got to do is call the phone number down on the bottom of the screen, or you can use that QR code, open up your phone to the camera, and click on it when it op opens up there. Go right to the website. You can schedule your own appointment right there. So more what to do is about Social Security and the state of retirement planning today in the United States when we get back after this message with Tim Lofton about refinancing your retirement. When interest rates are low, you might be able to refinance your home, your car, even your credit cards. Yet, when interest rates go up, it may make sense to refinance your retirement. Higher interest rates could provide income opportunities you may not be aware of. Find out if a retirement refi could work for you. Call now to claim your complimentary Refi Your Retirement review.
for every new person coming into our office, we are well aware that it's uncomfortable. And so we go out of our way to introduce them to the people that they're going to be interacting with. We have an estate planning attorney and a business planning attorney that come alongside people that are looking for those areas of expertise. And of course, we have a tax professional that is going to help optimize tax control, making sure we're taking the money out of the right accounts at the right time. A team of wealth advisors that do everything from the conservative area of investing all the way up to aggressive and everything in between that have many years of experience of navigating tough markets. We say all the time that people bring us in a box of puzzle pieces. We ask them what that picture is supposed to be like, and then we put that puzzle together. Welcome back to the Retirement Blueprint Show with Tim Lofton of Axum Planning and Wealth. We need some solutions, some gaps to help us out with that income gap in retirement. Mm -hmm. You said by 2037, about how many people will be relying on Social Security? 70 million <sighs> is the estimate. 70 million, Spike. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's a crazy number. And it, it speaks to the concern of Social Security when they're looking at, you know, Social Security wasn't designed to be a long-term retirement vehicle. I mean, if you look back, and, and a lot of us don't remember that, um, I had a, a great aunt that was, she lived to be uh, 99 years old. And she told me that she paid into Social Security for about six to 12 months, and then got a check in the mailbox, think about this, every month for the rest of her life. It wasn't designed. When Social Security first started, the average life expectancy was 64. Mm -hmm. You get it at 65. Yeah. It just worked itself out. Now you fast forward to today, where a married couple, one of them is going to live to be 94 years old, which is awesome. Yeah. But that means that the the stress, and this is what happened with pensions in America. They simply said, "Listen, they're going to put us out of business." Yeah. Yeah, and the same thing with individual long-term care policies. They've become cost prohibitive. Mm -hmm. We like to have more of a, a hybrid kind of tool that could either be for income, that could be for long-term care, or possibly even in a life insurance vehicle. We're, right. we're looking for hybrid solutions, so we're not just stuck in one channel paying for something that, that might not last for us all the way through retirement. There, there's just no longer that, that you do this and you do this and everything's going to be fine. That was our grandparents' retirement, where you know you retired uh, after 30 years, you got your gold watch, you got a check in the mailbox every month, you got your social security, and everything was good. And then grandpa lived to about 66, 68, 70 years old. Right. Uh, you know, yes, I know there are examples where somebody in a family lived longer, but usually that's been grandmother who, who lived longer, right. or moms, right? Um, so we've got to plan for a longer retirement, and we've got to plan for a proper percentage of where Social Security fits in your income plan. Mm -hmm. Another startling report is that a lot of Americans were gonna depend on Social Security for over 50% of their right. income. What's a percentage you're more comfortable with? You, you want it as high as 50? I mean, think of that ratio yeah. when you when you get a, a mortgage, right? Or e even a rent, you know, as right. you're younger. They don't want that above 28%. Right. You got a, a number you're comfortable with? I, I don't, and, and here's why. Everybody's Social Security is different and everybody's income need is different. You know, I think to the, the clients that we work with, we have some clients that are literally living on Social Security as their sole source of income and they're fine. They both have a fairly substantial Social Security check coming in. We have other people that have a big Social Security check and a big pension check and still need a significant amount of money from their savings. It depends on your lifestyle. I'm not looking for people to change their lifestyle to fit into an income bucket. I'm looking to make an income bucket that will support a lifestyle. All right. What we want to let folks know is that you can very easily find out what your Social Security is going to be by going to the Social Security website. We always joke about it. The hardest thing about that is remembering your password. You go to ssa.gov, you type in your username yeah. and your password. You can find out what it's going to be. That you can figure out on your own. What Tim is talking about here is taking your income plan with the rest of your investments, your assets, your income flow, and creating a complete plan that you can't run out of no matter how long you might live in retirement. Let's get that Social Security at a good value so we're not overly relying on that in retirement. One of the ways you can do that is you can call the phone number below here. 
We're going to be wrapping up the program soon. I've got a bonus topic on market volatility, but call that phone number. Call it literally right now. We have folks standing by to take your appointment. We'll help you with your income planning and Social Security with Tim Lofton here. Tim, last thing, a bonus topic here. Market volatility. Mm -hmm. We saw that interest rates, at least early in the year, weren't brought down, as they were talked about by Jerome Powell, uh, and that it seemed to send the markets haywire again. So if they don't move interest rates, the markets are moving around. Are you worried about the market volatility today? Well, I'm not worried about market volatility in short term ever uh, because I, I don't have control over that. Literally anything can happen to make the markets go up and down. A lot of it is emotionally generated, right? I receive information on the news, I react to it, I can log into my 401k statement, push a button, and I can literally liquidate a half a million dollars tomorrow. That type of volatility is not a reality. It is the emotional reaction to a short-term situation. Now, we look to those panics mm -hmm. uh, that we like to call and, and find opportunity. But at the end of the day, if you have a plan in place, it, the question is, do you have the money that has volatility associated with it attached to the right accounts and to the right money? It's about giving jobs to the money. That will determine where we're supposed to be. I, I always enjoy when you say that. And in fact, I know that you you operate exactly the same way, even at home. Mm -hmm. You're giving jobs to the kids this I am. summer, right? I am. All of them are going to be working. I, I just talked to my mom about this. Apparently, I'm supposed to be polishing my silver once a year. <laughs> which we don't use. <laughs> and I'm like, you know what? That would be the perfect punishment for the kids. I'm not going to take away the HDMI cable, make them sit at the dining room table and polish silver. Because I, I asked you about <laughs> your, your summer travel season. Of course, here in Ohio, we want to get out, see maybe some of those beaches, do some traveling. You're like, mm -hmm. the kids are just too busy. But too busy. they have assigned jobs, and, and there's a purpose for it and a reason. You want the, your money doing exactly the same thing, having assigned jobs so they're working for you. Right. And that's what you design inside the Retirement Blueprint. Mm -hmm. So, folks, we want to let you know you can get your own retirement blueprint. I'm going to throw it over to Tim before we wrap up the program here. But we just want to let you know this isn't something that's uh, literally just printed out like this or a booklet. The retirement blueprint is a process. So we want you to come in, and we'll talk to you about your income planning. What does your 401K look like? How long do you want to continue to use that? Maybe we want to do something like an in-service rollover. If we're in our 60s, turn it into a reliable income stream that we can work on all the way through retirement. Taxes, estate planning, health care choices, and like we've talked about much on today's program, Social Security. That's what the Retirement Blueprint is. We want to do that for you, our television viewers. Call the phone number you see down here. Folks are standing by right now to take your phone call to place your appointment with Tim Lofton. Tim, say goodbye to everybody before we leave today. Very excited that you tuned in this uh, Sunday to see us. And what I will tell you is this. You have questions. We have answers. Give us a call. Thank you so much for watching. We'll be back next week.